Hello everyone and welcome back to the walkthrough! Are you ready to battle the master of the grass club? I sure am! Pack your fire Pokémon up! Uh, actually, maybe I'm not all ready. <laughs> I forgot in the last deck to uh, at least put in that energy removal here. Uh, by the way, Bill is a nice card to have. You drop two cards when you have Bill, so keep those in there as along with your Professor Oaks. Draw power is very nice, just keep that in mind. Um, but don't overdraw. If you run out of cards, you lose the game. Uh, maybe I'll drop a computer search. I mean, they're, they're they're nice in a way, but they use up a lot of cards, so I'll just use them in an emergency. Yeah, I'll plop in the Gust of Wind to throw her off balance. Uh, full heals are nice because she uses a lot of status effects and stuff like that. Uh, what can I drop one of? <laughs> uh, me, uh, ye. Uh, I'm not really getting much use out of Machoke, am I? Maybe I'll drop that for now, even though it has potential to do some damage if you have 4 energy, but you're not really good to get the most out of Karate Chop here uh, most of the time, because Machop is probably going to be a attacking first and stuff like that, and yeah, Submission is its best attack in my opinion. So, okay, I'm going to go with that, and let's get battling. The Master of the Grass Club. Didn't you kind of introduce yourself before? And oh, forget it. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. Shall we duel? Yes! Let's get the Grass Metal! Six prizes! Boss time! Gym Leader! I mean, no. No, not Gym Leader. Club Master. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I get that this is all... A, like, the whole structure of the game is like a reference to regular Pokemon games and that there is... Uh, eight members uh, that have badges, instead they're not badges, you know, they are uh, medals and stuff like that, so yeah, that's what I've been hinting up to this point, if you didn't get that it sounds familiar sort of thing, and this is kind of an iffy hand. Uh, I definitely don't want to use Diglett or any ground Pokemon against hers, because she uses grass Pokemon, and her uh, flower power deck, yeah, it's... It might give you ire, let's just put it that way. <laughs> I mean, even though you have a lot of fire Pokemon in your deck, you still have early game deck syndrome. So don't expect that you are going to be able to blast her with ease, even if you have a lot of fire Pokemon. Just hope for the best and play to your strengths. Alright, so let's attach the energy, use Bill, and hopefully I'll get some ooh, energy removal. Hello! Ho -ho! Um, I wonder if I should get rid of that Psychic Energy or not. I think I'll save Energy Removal, actually. But it's just such a fantastic card, because just being able to disrupt your opponent's turns like that, because you can only attach one Energy card a turn, is just incredible. Uh, oh, wh why did I do that? <laughs> Alright, let's Paralyze. Oh, I was hoping I'd Paralyze. Dang you, luck-based elements. Dang you. But even though there are luck a lot of luck-based elements in this game, the idea of a trading card game is to play by probability, not by hoping for the coin flips. You always play for the worst uh, possible outcome that you can possibly get, basically. It sounds kind of bad to think the worst, because it sounds pessimistic, but it's really a good strategy. Uh, let's get... I got a lot of energy cards in my hand. Oh, it's, it, it would be kind of sad to, to dump all these fire ones, because I need the fire ones for fire Pokemon. So I think I'm going to hold out here and just uh, see if... Yeah, I woke up between turns. Usually they wake up within the two turns that uh, sleep will affect them between the opponent's turn and now. But it's just a thing of that it's kind of scary. By the way, um, as for Nikki's strategy, what she likes to do is get Venusaur out. Remember Venusaur with the energy transfer thing? And she also likes to get out um, Executor with it and use Big Explosion. What Big Explosion is, is that depending on how many grass energy is attached to um, to Executor, you'll be able to flip coins number to that energy. And for every heads you get, you do 20 damage to uh, the opponent's Pokémon. So that has the ability of doing massive amounts of damage. Uh, she's also got a Vile Plume around here. Uh, you know Vileplume already, I don't know how you'll have to describe that or anything. But, uh, uh, Vileplume is another thing that she can bring out, and she's also got Pokémon Breeder cards. So, uh, be careful of that, because she'll be able to get Pokémon powered up and ready quicker than you might expect. 
So yeah, um, let's see what she's got here. I think I might energy removal Oddish, maybe. Because see, what I'm doing here is I'm getting Charmander powered up and I'm going to wipe out XAQ before she gets to Executor. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of the energy on Oddish. And then retreat. Magnemite for Charmander. Grab all those fire energy cards. And attack with Ember. Exec execute is weak to fire, so it's going to do 60 damage, which will knock it out. Delightful. <laughs> oh man, this could be a long battle too, by the way, because of all these status effects and whatnot. Her strategy is mainly to stall until she gets her... Ace Pokemon out, basically, and that's a really good strategy, actually. But it's manageable. It is most certainly manageable. Um, I think I'm gonna gr get Growlithe power up here because Growlithe's attacks do will be doing uh, 40 damage to her Pokemon each turn because Flare, you know, does 20. Her Pokemon are weak to fire. Or blah 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 blah. You know the idea. And so it's thus it's a little bit more reliable than uh, Charmander's attacks in a way because Charmander keeps. Sucking up fire energy. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch to Growlithe. Use a fire energy card. Use this plus power. And as sad as it's going to be, I'm going to dump Charizard. I'm so sorry! <laughs> Charizard is a powerful card, but I'm not going to have that much energy cards at this rate. It's just the way how the game is going. As I said, you got to play with what you have. That is key. Ah, but I did get a Charmeleon. That That's pretty good, actually. I'll get that set up ahead of time here. And since I got a plus power, it's going to do 40 plus 10, because of the plus power, which will knock out Oddish. See, that is why plus powers are so fantastic, because you can actually manipulate the flow of the game. The idea of stacking your deck is quite literally to choose the cards that you want at almost any time, and to choose... And to disrupt your opponent as you possibly can please, and oh geez, Professor Oak. Uh, but yeah, that, that's my main deck strategy, is, is to make an incredibly consistent deck, no matter what cards I draw. What, what I want is cards that will always work for me, no matter what cards that I draw. That, well, at least that's the idea. <laughs> I want cards that will work in most situations, let's put it that way. <laughs> Come on, RK9, RK9, RK9! Aw, that would be nice. Uh, I think I'll get another Growlithe power up here on the bench, just for the sake of consistency for the future, and call it a turn, because it is paralyzed, which is too bad. But I am ahead two prize cards, which is cool. Um, Yeah, that's, that's not good. 10 damage per turn, now with poison, I'm probably going to want to switch Growlithe out. So I'm going to switch to another Growlithe, I will, I think I'll start um, powering up uh, Charmeleon soon enough, but for now I'm just going to put the pressure on Gloom here, uh, because it's going to force her to use Poison Powder again, and which is going to cause a knockout for her, because yeah, she has no choice but to use that basically as long as Gloom is out, and she probably doesn't want to switch because I've been kind of disrupting her energy reserves, which is exactly what I've been hoping to do. Uh, because her ace Pokemon do require a lot of energy. Oh my god, our canine! Are you serious? This duel is pretty much over now. <laughs> let's just put it that way. Uh, oh yeah, there's no space on the bench. What I'm going to do here is uh, Professor Oak, which will most likely give me a fire card. You know, a fire energy card. Most likely, I hope it does. Oh, there we go, just as I expected. Um, uh, actually, maybe not, uh, because I won't be able to consistently, you know, attack with Flamethrower. Maybe what I'll do is, uh, uh, let's see what she got here. I'm going to do a defensive gust of wind here. What I'm going to do is switch over to Bulbasaur, because it, it, it takes two energy cards to use his attack of Leech Seed. And that'll allow me to stall for this turn. Yeah, you can use Gust of Wind both offensively and defensively. Keep that in mind. Got it? Good. And yes, I know I could use Computer Search for a Fire Energy, but as I said, it's kind of wasteful to use it for energy because it's such a useful card to pick any card from your deck that you please. So let's just hold off on that for now. And oh, there's another Fire Energy. 
Okay, so since I know I'm going to be able to use Flamethrower two turns in a row, because I have enough fire energy, I'm just going to use a Flamethrower now and burn Bulbasaur for 100 damage, even though it's overkill. Uh, but the reason why I evolved up to um, uh, Arcanine here is because it has a 100 HP <laughs> thing of defense, so it's going to be very, very difficult for her to knock out. Uh, no matter how much status effect she throws out onto uh, my Pokemon, I'm going to evolve to Dugtrio just to keep things safe. Dugtrio has a retreat cost of 2, which I can afford if she gusts wind me over or something. I forgot what her uh, exact deck structure is, though. But, uh, yeah, just, I'm just sort of thinking of what she might have. I don't have all the decks in the game memorized or anything like that. I'm just playing to... I'm just playing as if I don't know her deck, I guess you could say. <laughs> Because I don't know her deck fully. But I don't remember if she has a Gust of Wind card offhand. I'm sure you see it on the side of the screen though, and you're like, Hey, it's right there! You should just be checking your notes, but my notes aren't really here with me right now. <laughs> Alright, I ran. I'll just use... I'll use Computer Search for... 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 Fire Energy. <laughs> it's, so, it's so silly to use it for this. But uh, I'm gonna win this turn anyway, as long as I have two Fire Energy cards, because she has no bench Pokémon. Yep, I win! I got the Grass Pebble! Oh! She didn't stand the chance. Well, she did actually pretty decent, but uh, yep. Woo! Didn't even take all the prizes. Which is mainly what I'm going to be aiming for in later deck builds, because my decks are pretty fast. <laughs> the, I mean, the decks that I know how to build. Alright. Grass Metal is mine! Woo! Seven more to go! Please take this too. And she gives out laboratory booster packs, which can't contain Mewtwo. <laughs> oh, super energy removal! Oh! Well, it's not quite as useful as the original energy removal because it, you have to discard one of your energy cards as well. But it's still a pretty nice card, uh, especially in the aforementioned Rain Dance set that I mentioned uh, in uh, another video. Let's see here. Uh, Marowak isn't that bad of a card, uh, especially since it gets search for particular fighting Pokemon that you can use to. Uh, that, like I say, you got an evolution card and you need the basic Pokemon for that evolution card. You can use Marowak to search for it as long as it's a fighting Pokémon. Uh, oh, this is the better version of Ghastly I talked about. Lick, right here, does 10 damage and paralyzes. Very nice. Uh, energy conversion, right here. See this? You can get energy cards from your discard pile and put them into your hand, but it costs a little bit of damage, but that's another useful thing to have. Uh, especially in, in, like, fire decks or something like that, like if you had a fire and psychic deck. Uh, you could use Ghastly to bring back the fire energy cards your fire Pokémon burn back to your hand. Uh, so yeah, that's a pretty nice version of Ghastly. Um, Arbok here. This is a pretty nice card for a poisonous deck. Uh, you can use it to switch Pokémon, so which, which is pretty disruptive for just one energy card. And you get automatic poison for just three energy cards. Not too shabby. Uh, Horsey is, enough, is a pretty snazzy little water Pokémon. Uh, so is Seedra in a way, because of its attack evasion types of moves in the form of Smokescreen and uh, Seedra's got agility, which is similar to uh, Raichu's agility. Gambler! Oh man, don't use this card. <laughs> it, it, if it fails you when you need it the most, you will not be happy. Use Professor Oak over Gambler. Got it? Good. Uh, here's a Game Boy version of Magnemite, but I prefer... Uh, the other version of Magnemite, personally, because it doesn't really have all that good of attacks, because you can paralyze for one energy card, and on top of that, it, this attack, Magnetic Storm, is really, really random, which is, <laughs> which is kinda dumb, in my opinion, because you don't have any strategy to using that. I mean, I guess you can get lucky using it, but if you have a lot of bench Pokémon, you are really, really hoping for the best. <laughs> um, Zubat is a, a pretty neat Pokemon. Well, I should say Zubat and Golbat are actually a, a better Pokemon than they might seem because of their disruptive and healing properties. Uh, so you might want to try those out if you're playing Grass. Uh, Spearow and Fearow, sorta kinda iffy. Mirror Move has some potential, 
But uh, since Mirror Move, you know, does damage equal to the amount of damage you took, the best that you can do ever is 40 for 3 energy cards, and that's sorta iffy. Uh, Slowpoke. This isn't too shabby of a card, actually, um, because you got spacing out here, you can heal it every turn, potentially. Um, and Scavenge allows you to take trainer cards from your discard pile and put it into your hand. Now, in a Psychic deck, you'll be able to use this move pretty consistently. So that means you'll be able to get yourself, like, Professor Oak, Computer Search, you know, whatever good used trainer cards that you've already uh, used uh, through the game, and put it right back in your hand when you need it. So, that's not too bad of a Pokémon. Yeah, okay. Went through those, strategized a bit, let's see what else we got here. Uh, this is one of two versions of Electro, this is the Game Boy exclusive version. Uh, Sonic Boom prevents those scurvy little rock decks from giving you ire because, yeah, weakness and resistance is not applied there. Um, Energy Spike, another one of those sorts of kind of cards that might, I mean, uh, sorts of kinds of moves that will be handy for you to power up your Pokémon. Uh, let's see, Marowak. Uh, Weezing's not a bad card, uh, but it's, it has very low HP, so it's not going to be sticking around for long, but the thing that makes it okay is that it's got uh, Poison and you can do Self-Destruct. Now, uh, it does 60 damage for 30. Now, it, it, sound, it sounds bad because it'll knock out your own Weezing, but if you attach a Defender to it, uh, it, Weezing will actually survive the explosion because it'll reduce the damage it took on the turn. Very, very tricky. I can do the same thing with my Magnemites if I had uh, Defenders on them too as well. Oh, this this Magmar. Incredible version of Magmar right here. I, I'm tempted to replace the other version of Magmar that I have in my deck with this one right here. Smokescreen. You know this attack. It's disruptive. And it can poison. And it's got 70 HP. <laughs> It's one of the best basic Pokémon in the game, in my opinion. Uh, Tentacle, this is a pretty funny Pokémon, is if you put damage counters on it, like say, uh, with Alakazam using its damage swap ability, uh, you can use damage swap, uh, I mean, Al Alakazam has damage swap, it lets you move damage counters as you please around your Pokémon. Uh, you can use Cowardice to, to put Tentacle back to your hand, and then that'll erase the damage counters that you put on Tentacool, because you can just reset Tentacool the very same turn. Very, very handy, and uh, otherwise, otherwise than that, it's kind of a weak Pokémon, but it's it's like a tech Pokémon. Uh, Recycle, not a bad card if you get lucky, because you're not really worried about failure as much as you would with something like Gambler, but the thing about it is that you have to wait until the next turn to draw that card, so... Keep that in mind if you decide to use Recycle. Um, we've seen Magnemite, we've seen Slowpoke. Uh, Doduo and Dodrio have some potential. Like, Do Dodrio has uh, Pokémon Power, which lets you switch off your Pokémon for one less energy card, which can be handy depending on the kind of deck that you are building, so you might want to use Dodrio as just a Pokémon on the bench, as, like, tech, and not something that you would use to attack. But, uh, I don't have a Dodrio, so I'm getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> Uh, Venonat and Venomoth are actually not too shabby, um, because you got the Stun Spore, you know, you could stall just like with Magmar and other types of Pokémon that I've mentioned before, and it's got Leech Life, but Venomoth has the ability to change the color of things, but I'll go into that a little bit later when I get a Venomoth, and there we go. My duel with you was quite fun. Please allow me to duel you again. Alrighty, so there we go. We have cleared! The Grass Club! Let's modify our deck a little <laughs> with the cards that we've got. So, trainer cards, let's see. Um, I'm tempted to put in Super Energy Removal just because it's so mean. <laughs> nah, so I think I will put in the Super Energy Removal just because it's so mean. Um, so I gotta switch something out for that. I know my- it looks like that my Pokémon reserves are getting lower and lower, but the thing is, is that I'm building it up with more disruptive cards and cards that'll help me draw, like uh, Professor Oak and, you know, Bills, so I'm not really offsetting the balance as much as you think I, I might be. So don't worry about this too much, what you're just aiming for is to be able to draw a lot of cards and pick the cards that you want to out of the deck, basically. Uh, and it, then it doesn't really matter which other cards you have there, per se, I guess you could say. <laughs> Hmm, let's see here, um, oh, I need to drop 
One of some, well, actually, I should first go over to, um... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do this version of Magmar. And I'm gonna keep the Growlithe and Arcanine. They aren't bad this early in the game. I'm thinking of dropping Charizard, believe it or not, because I just don't really have the reserves to get it out, and most of the time it's gonna be a dead draw uh, this early in the game. So I'm gonna play by probabilities and just do that. Um... Um... I don't know if Magneton's really worth it this early in the game either. So maybe I'll drop that and just stick with mostly basic Pokemon at this moment in time because I got some I got some pretty solid ones in here now. So there we go. And with that, I'm going to end off the part here. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you in the next part when I explore the clubs that I haven't explored before or perhaps maybe I'll battle you there of the fighting club to get things set up for the future or maybe I'll make notes to come back here later. Who knows? Who knows?